Hi, I'm Dr. Andrew Gabriel from Horizon College and Seminary and andrewkgabriel.com. I'm here with Dr. John Gresham from Kendrick Glennon Seminary in St. Louis, Missouri. He's a Catholic charismatic and he's been doing a, some research for a book on the spiritual gifts. So, uh, John, as you know, and probably most of the listeners and my readers know, uh, most Pentecostals and Charismatics tend to think about spiritual gifts as something that is an individual's thing. Mm -hmm. um, and you talk about communal charisms, communal gifts. Can you talk a little bit about what that means, what that is? Yeah, this is a very common uh, concept in the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. Each religious order or religious community of monks or nuns has its own unique charism. Okay. And rather than an individual gift given to a person, this would be a gift that's shared by all in that religious community. And this would be true not only of religious, uh, or those living a consecrated life, but uh, lay people. So a lay movement in the church has some sort of shared charism or gift of the Holy Spirit that everyone in that movement in some way shares and participates in that gift of the Holy Spirit. And that's, uh, it's a, a gift to the wider church as well, just like the individual charisms. So could you give us an example of what a communal charism might be? Yeah, I think uh, an example, it's something mysterious about it because it's like a, a way of life. It's a way of following Jesus. Mm -hmm. And a great example would be to think of a St. Francis. So Francis develops this unique way of living the Christian life with kind of radical poverty, joy, sharing the gospel. He attracts followers. And so this charism is Franciscan spirituality, a Franciscan way of following Jesus. And that, mm -hmm. that would be an example of a, of a communal charism. So it's not like saying this group has the gift of prophecy or something like that. <laughs> right, right. It, you know, it, it might be related to a particular apostolate. So we could think, say, of a lay movement that, like the Catholic worker movement is a lay movement of people mm -hmm. working with the poor, working for peace. So... It, it would reflect a certain kind of work, but it's just much more than that. It's embracing a particular way of life and it's given as a gift of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so where do you see this in the scripture? Because a lot of people be like, well, that sounds nice, but <laughs> where is that in the Bible? Yeah, and, and yeah. Even, even in the Catholic Church, some would say, well, when we talk about a communal charism, it's just kind of a way of speaking. Mm -hmm. But I actually think it's really rooted in scripture, and I find it in Romans eleven twenty nine. St. Paul says of the ancient Israelites, the gifts and calling of God given to them. And the word gifts there is charisms. He's mm -hmm. talking about a spiritual gift given to the whole people of Israel. Right. And he describes them in Romans 9, where he speaks up what was given to Israel, their adoption to sonship, the divine glory, the covenants, the receiving of the law, the temple worship, the promises. So these were not gifts just given to individual Israelites. These were gifts given to the whole people. And they were intended, eventually, through the birth of the Messiah, to the, to the blessing of the whole world. So I think that gives us a firm biblical basis to speak of communal charisms or communal gifts. So what does this matter to the average churchgoer? Yeah, I, I think where it's significant is to see the role of movements in the church. Mm -hmm. So we have the local congregation, or we would say local parish, mm -hmm. and that's part of what God is doing in the church. That may be the chief thing that God is doing, is gathering people into local communities. But then God also raises up movements in the church. Um, and, and this is a reality beyond the Catholic Church, missionary movements. Uh, movements of service to the poor, uh, not only a certain ministry, but a way of living the Christian life and creates these communities of people sharing in a common work because they've been touched by a common gift of the Holy Spirit. It unites them as a community, uh, but again, not just a geographical local congregation, but some sort of dynamic movement in the church. Thanks very much, John. Thank you.